In this video, we'll start to dive into the complexities of creating a logical condition in JavaScript, first using Boolean operators. And we'll also talk about some strategies around how to translate the English language statement of the behavior you want into the JavaScript syntax. We're going to give a more formalized process and name to the practice of translating our English language sentences about what we want our programs to do into a specific set of logical statements still in the English language. And this is called pseudocode. This is just a way to be more specific about the logical behavior that we want. We'll make some changes to the dice game to make it easier. What I want is a game that's more lenient. So if the user guesses within one, then they still win the game. So for example, if they guess five and the dice rolls four, they still win. If they guess three and the dice rolls two, they still win. Pseudocode is an English language statement about the exact logic your code needs in order to exhibit the behavior that you want. It's a bridge between the intention of what you want your code to do and the JavaScript code that you need to write. It's part of the process of transforming this intention, the things that you know you want your code to do, into the actual working code. Anytime you're not sure about what logic you need, what data you need, or how to go about constructing those statements, pseudocode is an easy way to begin thinking through the process of what code to write. I want my pseudocode to be a complete listing of all the logic that I need to write in my JavaScript. So in the example that I gave, I could say if the user guesses the random number minus one, they win. Also, if the if user guesses the random number plus one, they win. And I also want to include the original case, which is if the user guesses the random number. they win. So I want to make sure that my logical statements are comprehensive, that nothing is left implicit. I copied my pseudocode into the JavaScript file itself, and now let's implement it. Before I actually add the condition, I'm going to change the message to say what I guessed, just to make the output easier to look at. So here, I'm going to add the guest number to the output, which is the input parameter. And we're going to add this down here as well. Now we can implement the conditions. This first pseudocode is the same condition that I already have. This pseudocode is the same condition as I have here, except that this equivalence is the random dice roll plus one. So I can give another set of parentheses to make this more clear. So if the user guesses the random number plus one, then they still win. So this other pseudocode is the same as that one, except minus one instead of plus one. Let's save this and try it in the browser. Now I'll guess so we can try it out. You can see that I guessed one and I rolled two and the winning condition uh, showed up in the gray box. So everything is working. This code is complete and it's working. 
And if we look back at it, we can see that actually that there's a pattern that's repeating itself. A lot of this code is duplicated. One really important aspect in the process of coding is revisions after you've already gotten it to work. This is called refactoring. And one of the big reasons why you might do this is if you see patterns within your code that repeat themselves over and over again. You can see here in my code that I'm repeating myself quite a lot. These conditions that I have are all very similar. Input equal to random dice roll minus one. Input equal to random dice roll plus one. Input equal to random dice roll. And for the winning condition, this code is exactly the same every single time. So here, here, and here. So how do I refactor my code? so that I'm stating my conditions in a more succinct way and so that I don't have to repeat the winning code three times. You'll find as you gain more practice in using these logical statements that there are many different ways to construct the same logical condition. We're going to add a new tool into the toolbox, which is the logical or. And so we're going to restate the logic that we have in this pseudocode using this uh, or Boolean operator. So another way that I could put this pseudocode is if the user guesses the random number plus one or minus one or exactly they win. I've pasted my pseudocode into my script.js. Now we can implement this in JavaScript. So the way that a logical or works is that any of these conditions could be true. The user guesses random number plus one or minus one or exactly. And these correspond to the JavaScript conditional statements I already have. With logical or, I can combine them into one if condition. So I'm going to begin with a single condition and use logical or, which are the two pipes, and copy the other individual conditions I have here. Now I have a single if condition with all of the individual Boolean statements inside of it. Let's do a console log. And I'm gonna get rid of my old code and try this in the browser. Now I'm going to guess two and keep guessing two until I've satisfied all three of the conditions. So if I roll a one and I guess two, I'm going to win. If I roll two and I guess two, I'm going to win. And if I roll three and I guess two, I'm also going to win. So I guess two and I rolled two and I won. I guess two, I rolled three and I won. Now I want to see what happens when I roll a one. And I rolled a one and it still works. The last thing to do is put back in my winning condition message and now my game is complete.